This is Deborah Baker with the CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Deborah Baker with Trusted CISO and Isabella Otero. So we're really excited to be back. We had a little break, but we're back in action and going to be telling you about all the latest that's going on in cybersecurity. And so welcome back to the CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience podcast, where we explore the latest developments in cybersecurity and provide actionable strategies for staying resilient. I'm Deborah Baker, your host, and with me is my amazing co-host, Isabella Otero. Hey, Deborah, I'm glad to be back after a few nice weeks off, and now we're back to dive into business. Yes. So we've got two important topics to cover today. A major payment gateway, I'm sorry, gateway data breach affecting 1.7 million credit card holders and a critical vulnerability in Apache Hue Graph server that's actively being exploited. Let's dive into the first story we mentioned, SlimCD's data breach. For those just tuning in, SlimCD, a payment gateway provider, recently disclosed that they were breached for almost a year exposing sensitive information like credit card numbers and addresses of 1.7 million individuals. Wow. That's right, Deborah. The breach spanned from August 2023 to June of 2024, with hackers having access to their systems undetected for nearly 10 months. Even though the CVV codes weren't stolen, there's still a significant risk of identity fraud. The hackers were able to access sensitive customer data including full names, addresses, credit card numbers, and expiration dates. SlimCD didn't detect the breach until mid-June of this year, and they believe the hackers accessed credit card information over a two-day period, June 14th to 15th. Now, while the card verification number, the CVV, wasn't compromised, there's still a significant risk of fraud. Even without the CVV, cybercriminals could use the stolen information for phishing attacks or other forms of identity fraud. It's a stark reminder that just because a piece of puzzle is missing, it doesn't mean that the danger is over. Yeah, one of the things about this that really stood out is that they were actually on their network for almost a year, for 10 months until, so, you know, what hackers will do is they'll they'll get access to the network. Then they're like quietly figuring out the network and they, they want to figure out where that sensitive data is that is basically going to make them a lot of money. And so it obviously it took them about 10 months. And then when they, you know, when they finally realized where the sensitive data was, then they actually did, you know, remove that data over those two days. Right, right. I know it's crazy to me, like, how they were slowly inserting themselves and gaining, you know, little bits and like pieces of information and how, you know, these major companies, you know, they can't always track, you know, once they get a ping from an IP address, you know, from someplace that may be relatively close or like where their, you know, their coworkers may be. So it's kind of hard to kind of like pinpoint exactly like who's kind of digging where they shouldn't. Right, right. And it's my understanding they're they're very, you know, quiet in what they're doing. So it doesn't, you know, your IDS, your IPS or different, you know, your SIM is not going to all of a sudden, you know, start having alarms or alerts. And so they're very, you know, quiet in their movement. They're not going to like pull a bunch of data. If, cause if they suddenly a bunch of data started moving on the network, then there would be alerts sent. So they waited until they knew, you know, okay, this is where the date is. This is where the server is. Okay. Now we're, you know, now we're going to do it, but yeah, just, it's amazing. You know, 10 months, that that's a long time. They were very persistent 10 months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So one of the things is to protect yourself is you need to be, you know, on high alert now that this information is out. Um, They have not offered like free identity theft protection, which a lot of times you will see if there's a big breach. And, but one thing that you can do is lock down your credit. So you can go to, 
you know, each one of the major credit monitoring services, Equifax, Experion, and TransUnion, and you can, you know, basically lock your credit down. And Equifax has, they actually have an app now that you can put on your phone. Yeah, you have to go and get set up on their website and everything. But once you do, you can download this app on your phone called Lock and Alert. And then you can actually just turn your credit on or off. So if you're like at a store and you want to open a new card or something like that, they it just makes it really easy. Oh, well, that's something that I'm definitely going to have to download after this. Okay. So what's the key takeaway here? First, if you're a business handling sensitive data, you need to act quickly once suspicious activity is detected. Don't wait for a full-scale breach to unfold. To do that effectively, you need an intrusion detection system, IDS, and an intrusion and or an intrusion prevention system, IPS, in place, alongside a security information and event management system, also known as SIM. And the IDS monitors network traffic for suspicious activity, like unauthorized access attempts or abnormal behavior and will alert you to potential threats. An IPS goes a step further by actively blocking or preventing those threats from compromising your system. Meanwhile, a SIM platform collects and correlates your logs from across all of your systems and will send alerts depending on you know, different um, actions and things that it detects in your network or cloud environment. Having these systems in place isn't enough by itself. You need dedicated security personnel to review alerts, investigate anomalies, and respond to threats before they escalate. Second, we're seeing how important it is to have a comprehensive breach notification plan in place. Transparency with customers can make all the difference in managing a crisis. And to add to that, even if businesses don't directly handle consumer data like Slim CD, which primarily works with merchants, the responsibility is still on them to secure all aspects of their system. Cyber criminals don't care who the point of contact is. They care about the weakest link. This highlights the growing importance of third-party vendor risk management ensuring that your partners and service providers have strong security measures in place is just as important as securing your own systems. Yep. So now we're going to go on and we're going to talk about the Apache huge graph vulnerability. So this second major story is the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA, has issued an urgent warning about the active exploitation of a vulnerability in Apache HugeGraph server. The flaw tracked as CVE-2024-27348 is a remote code execution vulnerability with a critical CVSS score of 9.8. This vulnerability affects Huge graph server versions 1.0.0 through 1.2.9. While Apache did release a patch back in April of 2024, upgrading to the version 1.3.0, there's a heightened concern now because the flaw is being actively exploited in the wild. The federal agencies and critical infrastructure organizations have until October 9th of 2024 to apply the necessary patches. That's right around the corner. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things that I love about CISA is they have this exploited vulnerability catalog. And basically you can have a vulnerability. It might, I mean, this one is a 9.8, but there are ones that could be like a five or a six, but because it's actively being exploited, they know that there's some sort of hacker kit. And so now, you know, this becomes a major priority and they put a date on it. And that's what I really love is a, you know, they're telling you, okay, you need to get this done by, you know, October the 9th. So I do um, love that CISA's, you know, providing this information. So this is a classic example of how fast a vulnerability can be weaponized. 
the flaws related to improper access controls, allowing attackers to execute arbitrary code on the server. Once they have access, the attackers could potentially manipulate large data sets, something Huge Graph Server is well known for. So Huge Graph Server is widely used in industries like telecom, financial services, and social networks. This makes the exploitation particularly dangerous because these environments handle massive, valuable data sets. For example, telecoms uses Huge Graph for fraud detection and financial institutions leverage. It is for risk control and transaction analysis. To mitigate this risk, Apache not only released version 1.3.0, but also recommended that users upgrade to Java 11, enable the authentication system, and use the whitelist IP port function to protect the, re the RESTful API execution. These steps are crucial for anyone relying on this platform. And this isn't just about patching. Organizations need to apply defense in-depth strategies, particularly when handling such critical data. Failure to secure a database system like this can lead to far-reaching consequences. CISA also added four additional vulnerabilities to their known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. These include well-known flaws from Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle WebLogic, and others. While these vulnerabilities have been out for a while, their inclusion shows that older exploits can still be part of active threat campaigns. Absolutely, Deborah. It's not just about new vulnerabilities. Old flaws can be just as dangerous, especially when they remain unpatched in large, complex environments. So what are our key takeaways today? First, businesses must act quickly in the wake of a breach or a vulnerability discovery. In the case of SlimCD, 10 months of undetected access is simply too long. Second, organizations using software like Apache Huge Graph Server must stay on top of patches and follow all recommended security protocols. The threat is real and evolving. And lastly, this is yet another reminder that patching known vulnerabilities, whether new or old, is not optional. It's a critical part of staying resilient in the face of cyber threats. Yep, that's right. So that's all for today's episode. As always, we encourage you to stay informed and stay resilient. The risks are real, but with the right strategies in place, we can all protect our organizations from evolving cyber threats. Until next time, stay vigilant, stay secure, and stay cyber resilient. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to pick up a copy of my book, a CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience available on Amazon. And remember to stay cyber resilient.